Many classic horror icons such as Giger Xenomorphs, Silent Hill's Pyramid Head, and other disturbing creatures share common characteristics. Pale skin, dark sunken eyes, elongated faces, sharp teeth and the like. These images inspire horror and revulsion in many, and with good reason. The characteristics shared by these faces are imprinted in the human mind. Many things frighten humans instinctively. The fear is natural and does not need to be reinforced in order to terrify. The fears are species-wide, stemming from dark times in the past, when lightning could mean the burning of your tree home. Thunder could be the approaching gallops of a stampede. Predators could hide in the darkness. And heights could make poor footing lethal. The question you have to ask yourself is this. What happened deep in the eras, before history began, that could affect the entire human race so evenly as to give the entire species a deep instinctual and lasting fear? of pale beings with dark sunken eyes, razor-sharp teeth, and elongated faces. Be careful out there. In 1983, a team of deeply pious scientists conducted a radical experiment in an undisclosed facility. The scientists had theorized that a human without access to any senses or ways to perceive stimuli would be able to perceive the presence of God. They believed that the five senses clouded our awareness of eternity, and without them, a human could actually establish contact with God by thought. An elderly man who claimed to have nothing left to live for was the only test subject to volunteer. To purge him of all of his senses, the scientists performed a complex operation in which every sensory nerve connection to the brain was surgically severed. Although the test subject retained full muscular function, he could not see, he could not hear, he could not taste, he could not smell, and he could not feel. With no possible way to communicate with or even sense the outside world, he was alone with his thoughts. Scientists monitored him as he spoke aloud about his state of mind in jumbled, slurred sentences that he couldn't even hear. After four days, the man claimed to be hearing hushed, unintelligible voices in his head. Assuming it was the onset of psychosis, the scientists paid little attention to the man's concerns. Two days later, the man cried that he could hear his dead wife speaking with him. And even more, he could communicate back. The scientists were intrigued, but were not convinced until the subject started naming dead relatives of the scientists. He repeated personal information to the scientists that only their dead spouses and parents would have known. At this point, a sizable portion of scientists left the study. After a week of conversing with the deceased through his thoughts, the subject became distressed, saying the voices were overwhelming. In every waking moment, his consciousness was bombarded by hundreds of voices that refused to leave him alone. He frequently threw himself against the wall, trying to elect a pain response. He begged the scientists for sedatives so he could escape the voices by sleeping. The tactic worked for three days, until he started having severe night terrors. The subject repeatedly said that he could see and hear the deceased in his dreams. Only a day later, the subject began to scream and claw at his non-functional eyes, hoping to sense something, anything, in the physical world. 
The hysterical subject now said the voices of the dead were deafening and hostile. Speaking of hell and the end of the world. At one point he yelled, no heaven, no forgiveness, for five hours straight. He continually begged to be killed. The scientists were convinced that he was close, so close to establishing a contact with God. After another day, the subject could no longer form coherent sentences. Seemingly mad, he started to bite off chunks of flesh from his arm. The scientist rushed into the test chamber and restrained him to the table so he could not kill himself. After a few hours of being tied down, the subject halted his struggling and screaming. He stared blankly at the ceiling as teardrops silently streaked across his face. For two weeks, the subject had, been, had to be manually rehydrated due to his constant crying. Eventually, he turned his head and, despite his blindness, made focused eye contact with a scientist for the first time in the study. He whispered, I have spoken with God. He has abandoned us. His vital signs stopped. There was no apparent cause of death. 